Every gamer, including you, dear viewer, has their personal game of the year, right? Once award season comes around, everybody starts placing their bets and starts rooting for their favorites. But that's not until towards the end of the year. So why not get the ball rolling now? We here at GameAid will launch that ball ourselves by putting a spotlight on games that deserve your attention and maybe even a trophy or two. Can a game released earlier in the year have enough critics confident enough that it'll sweep major categories? Can an indie darling come out in the middle of the summer and still be remembered once the holidays roll around? We will catalog some of the standout games already out within the year and assess their chances of winning an award. May it be for best music, best action game, best indie game, or even the coveted Game of the Year award. Each video will only feature games released within every quarter of the year, so that no game released early is forgotten, or games released at the end of the year have the benefit of recency bias. For this episode, we'll be putting a spotlight on some games released from January to March of 2023. All's fair in love and war, and we're here to stoke the flames of war, all for the games we know and love. This is Game Mates Gody Watch 2023. Starting off with a strong contender for best art direction, best action game, and probably a shoe-in for the biggest surprise of the year, it's the show-stopping hack-and-slash rhythm game, Hi-Fi Rush. Out of nowhere, it shadow dropped during Xbox's January Developer Direct, and very quickly started kicking ass and taking names. With a unique gameplay hook, gorgeous art style, and a vibe that would make it the coolest and corniest Saturday morning cartoon around, it definitely got everyone rocking. Playing as Chai, an aspiring rock star, players get to rock, suck, and scrap many robotic foes all to the beat of the game's original and licensed music. Chai is accompanied by several other over-the-top misfits, like the mischievous hacker Peppermint and her robot Cat 808, and the big softy of a tinkerer named Macaron. The evil conglomerate Vandalay Technologies is trying to take over the world, as any self-respecting evil corporation should, and this unlikely team-up is here to stop them. Developed by Tango Gameworks, Hi-Fi Rush's gameplay centers around the player quite literally feeling the beat of the world. While the game's hack-and-slash mechanics are solid enough, it is elevated by having to input commands on beat to execute more stylish moves and deal extra damage. You don't need to be on beat all the time. The game is generous enough to just let you mash buttons and have fun that way. But to really get into the flow of things, you gotta bob your head and tap your feet. Hi-Fi Rush is an absolutely fun and delightful game that rocks to the beat of its own drums. From the music, to the writing, to art style and animation, it's a game that is bursting with confidence and a feast for the eyes and ears. While it very much deserves a nomination for Best Action Game, we are more confident that it'll put up a strong fight to win an award for Best Art Direction. For Hi-Fi Rush, the question is not of if it wins any awards, but of how many. 2023 started off with a surprising banger of a game, and it's just getting started. Octopath Traveler returns with its sequel some five years later, and it is still a sight to behold. Octopath Traveler 2 still retains many of the bells and whistles the first game had. It smartly iterated upon them, making it a much better experience overall. While many were drawn by the series' beautiful HD 2D art style, a surprise standout from the first game was its soundtrack. As for Octopath Traveler 2, not only does it meet expectations, it absolutely blows it away. Yasunori Nishiki returns as the composer for Team Asano's latest game, and he brings a soundscape so breathtakingly wide and so masterfully crafted. From cozy village tunes, to mischievous harmonies, to heart-pounding battle music, to Particio's theme. Just, just Particio's theme. Oh my, what a sauntry bop. Of course, this love letter to classic JRPGs should be praised for its other aspects as well. A number of improvements have been made to the battle mechanics, making it much more engaging. 
the HD 2D art style is as beautiful as ever, providing much more depth and detail. And the story's heavier emphasis on its characters' individual arcs brings much more interesting stories across the board. With all that said, it is Octopath Traveler 2's soundtrack that gives it the best chance of taking home the trophy for best music. Its huge assortment of varying themes oozes personality, not only for the moments and characters the pieces are made for, but for the game as a whole. It offers stiff competition for the other games coming out this year, and it would be a shame if it didn't at least get an odd or two. 2023 is shaping up to be the year for horror games to dominate, and the Dead Space remake is the appetizer to a full-course meal of suspense and terror planned out for the year. The triumphant return of the once-dormant franchise comes in the form of Motive Studios' fateful modernization of the 2008 sci-fi horror classic. Quality of life improvements, a major visual overhaul, and smart additions that blend everything together brought the rotting series back to life. A standout aspect of the original Dead Space that the remake innovates upon is with its sound design. From the use of audio occlusion that makes sounds travel realistically, to the also visceral harmony of ripping flesh and crushing bones, Dead Space Remake succeeds in giving players a sense of dread even without a single necromorph in sight. It is the natural evolution of the survival horror genre that Resident Evil 4 revolutionized way back then. And so Dead Space Remake has come to pick up the pieces to remind us again that in space, no one can hear you scream. And that's a shame, because it would sound fantastic. While horror games, and horror game remakes for that matter, have their work cut out for them when it comes to getting some recognition, Dead Space Remake has a good amount of meat on its bones to be up for contention for best audio design. However, another game may not need much to take it out of the running. Nevertheless, here's hoping that Dead Space Remake breaks a ligament. Wait, no. Breaks a limb? Breaks a leg? No, that sounds too tame. Well, breaks a whatever the saying is and gets some well-deserved kudos. An indie game that explores the deepest part of the seas and the human psyche, Dredge is Black Salt Games' debut title that has impressed critics and gamers alike with its simple yet addicting mechanics and a story and style that oozes mystery and macabre. Dredge puts players in the boots of a lone fisherman, trying to pay his debts at the quaint coastal town of Greater Marrow. After taking on a job as the local angler, the fisherman soon uncovers secrets hidden under the sea or by the townsfolk. He'll have to survive the horrors past the fog, beneath the murky waters, and even those that are beyond human comprehension. It is essentially a fishing and management game where players will have to go to and from the sea to catch fish and find treasure or other items to settle their dues. While the inventory management and minigames to catch fish are simple enough, the real challenge comes once night settles in. The fisherman has a panic gauge that increases as you sail through the night or encounter the strange and unexplained. This mix of chill gameplay and chilling eldritch horrors left a deep impression on many, especially on those wanting a palate cleanser from AAA blockbuster games. Its simple yet evocative style screams Lovecraftian sensibilities. Its gameplay scratches the gamer's itch of risking it all for just one more run, as well as the gamer's curiosity to face the horrors of the deep. Definitely a remarkable debut for Black Salt Games and a solid contender not only for a Best Debut Game Award but also a Best Indie Game nomination. While games released during the first quarter of the year tend to be forgotten, Dredge's maiden voyage is bound to get its second wind when the time for awards and honors comes. Until then though, the question left for Dredge to ponder on is, are there even bigger fish just waiting to snatch away its spotlight? Capcom has caught lightning in a bottle twice with Resident Evil 4 Remake, which begs the question, 
is it possible for RE4 Remake to win Game of the Year again? The expectations for a remake of one of the most influential games of all time is always sky high. But Leon's reimagined European vacation meets those expectations with flying colors. With tasteful modernizations as well as some welcomed additions, Resident Evil 4 Remake is a touchstone, not only for all remakes in the future, but for all games hereafter. The overall gameplay and story of RE4 Remake still carries the original satisfying combat and cheesy tone. Enhancements like a darker and more sinister atmosphere juxtaposed with the one-liners and the over-the-top suplexes keep the original game's campy feel without seeming out of touch. New mechanics like Leon's parry add even more to the already jam-packed experience. All of this put together make for a fresh yet familiar remake and lets it stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with other AAA titles. Just like with the Resident Evil 2 remake, the remake of Resident Evil 4 stands alongside the original, complementing it instead of replacing it. While it does away with the original's quick-time events, it replaces it with more engaging encounters that feel just as flashy. The original had a fairly linear experience, but the remake expands the areas Leon is able to go through, allowing for additions like side quests and a more cohesive sense of exploration. And more importantly, Ashley Graham is now not annoying. Well, for the most part. <laughs> You're no fun. Resident Evil 4 Remake is 2023's first surefire game of the year contender, and boy does Capcom set the bar pretty high. That being said, games like Tears of the Kingdom and Diablo 4 have already received just as much praise, so RE4 Remake undoubtedly has some serious competition. Not to mention other titans like Starfield and Marvel Spider-Man 2 have yet to enter the ring, so it is still anybody's game at this point. But with a bit of luck, a well-timed parry and roundhouse kick, Resident Evil 4 is sure to not go down without a fight. It is sure to bring home an award or two. Okay, this is the earliest game to be released in this Goldie watch list, and it's honestly a long shot, but we definitely think this game deserves more attention. So, for your consideration, this is a space for the unbound. A Space for the Unbound is a 2D pixel art style adventure game made by the Indonesian developers at Mojiken Studio, who've also made other small games like Divination, a fortune telling simulator, and When the Past Was Around, a point and click adventure game about love, loss, moving on, and letting go. Published by Toge Productions, known for the Coffee Talk series, A Space for the Unbound shows the potential of games coming from Southeast Asia. The game takes place in a 90s era Indonesia and puts players in the shoes of Atma, a high school student trying to fulfill a bucket list of to-dos with his girlfriend Raya just before they graduate. Atma then obtains a mysterious red book that allows him to jump into the subconscious of the people he comes across, being able to see firsthand the extreme ways people internally see themselves and how they think the rest of the world sees them too. Think Psychonauts but much less cartoony and wacky, or Persona, but much more introspective and down-to-earth. A space for the Unbound has Atma and Raya explore various areas within their quaint little town, interact with other various folk, and get into antics with varying degrees of emotional weight. Story beats can come in the form of simple QTEs and minigames. Its gameplay is simple and can be a tad repetitive at points, but the main draw of A Space for the Unbound is its story, with presentation coming in as a close second. Its gorgeous pixel art style is full of personality, using a color palette that's easy on the eyes. Accompanied by a beautiful score as well, the plot of A Space for the Unbound focuses on a coming-of-age story that deals with various sensitive and profound topics, but presents them all in a digestible way without losing the gravity of it all. Adma and Raya's journey is an emotional tale that can pull on the heartstrings of even the most jaded of adults but still recognizes the harshness of reality. 
It balances out its explorations on topics like the effects of anxiety and depression with light-hearted moments like watching a movie or feeding stray cats. While it is a long shot for Game of the Year, especially since there are more games to come out for the rest of the year, a space for the Unbound can still make its case for at least a nomination for a major award category like Best Narrative. Its story and characters may be simple, but it doesn't sugarcoat the issues it wants to tackle. The game delicately brings it all together, leading towards a satisfying conclusion. All of these elements mix together to become an experience that may be easygoing, but is very much meaningful. And that is why we think A Space for the Unbound deserves to be in the conversation. Even just getting a nomination would still be a win for the game because it means that it would get the exposure it deserves. Our hopes for A Space for the Unbound for just a nomination, much less an award, is hinged on a win and a prayer. But we still recommend people to keep a close eye on the game and its possibility to punch above its weight and reach far beyond the stars and space. And those were just some of the major contenders the first quarter of 2023 has to offer. If this keeps up for the rest of the year, 2023 is gonna be a treat for gamers and will definitely be one for the books. But what do you think? Did we leave out any games released in Q1 that should be in the conversation for Godi? How likely do you think the games we've mentioned will win? Should we just lock in Leon S. Kennedy for best boy this early on? Let us know all your thoughts down in the comments section below. Cody Watch will continue for the rest of the year, so stay tuned in on us to bring you all the games to keep an eye out for that can, could, or should win Game of the Year. If you enjoy what we do, share the love by giving us a like. And don't forget to subscribe to GameMate Information Station to keep up to date with the latest in gaming news, reviews, and other fun content around all things gaming. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.